What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and we are back with a new top 10 for you guys today and today guys we're taking a look at top 10 general creatures you should use for Scorched Earth. So guys this is essentially just going to be a general overview of a bunch of dinos that you should be using or should use on Scorched Earth. I've gone through the list of all the creatures that spawn on Scorched Earth. These are the 10 that I found to be the best. This is based on my opinion. So you guys may have differing dinos on this list in comparison to me, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you do, don't forget to leave a like and uh, subscribe down below for more. Alrighty guys, so coming in at number 10, we have the Vulture. Now the Vulture is one of the many creatures that spawns on Scorched Earth and uh, he's really great. So essentially if you get attacked by a dino, these guys will aggro on it and murder it. You saw there, they pretty much just wiped out that dire wolf in a matter of seconds. We do have three of them here and they are max level tame. Mind you though, they don't have any extra levels pumped into them. You can see here that this raptor will also attack us and then the dimorphodons will attack back. Now, they can't actually, um, what's the word? They don't attack on command. So for example, if you try to whistle them to attack target, it won't work. You have to actually wait for the target to attack you before they will trigger. You saw there the raptor attacked us and then uh, the vultures went ham. Now, another really cool factor about these guys is that when you're standing over a corpse and you've got one of these on your shoulder and you know, they kill you. So for example, we'll deactivate GCM mode here and you guys will see that the one on our shoulder will start attacking back. See there, we're gonna reactivate it so we don't die. But you can see he's attacking the Anki while being on our shoulder and he then also harvests the meat while being on your shoulder, which is awesome. Now, you can't actually put meat into his inventory. You'll see here we can't actually put it back into his inventory. But you can use this to go about harvesting uh, overses on Scorched Earth for all the mutton in the world. These guys are really great for doing that. As well as that, the spoil timer on these is, I think, quadruple. So you can see there, it's 5 hours for that stack of 40. We'll pull it out into our inventory and it's gone down to 20 minutes. It is a lot more than 4 times. Uh, so you can see the spoil time is 5 hours, whereas for us it is only 20 minutes. So these guys make a massive difference when you're going about collecting mud in and raw prime, especially when you're doing it on official. I'd recommend carrying one on your shoulder. We were going to put the Jaboa on this list, but I just didn't think the Jaboa had that many uses as the Vulture. Granted, the Jaboa is hella cute, and you can detect when certain storms and whatnot are coming. I just think that the Vulture has a much better capability and usefulness than the Jaboa. So yeah, guys, the Vulture comes in at number 10 on the list. Now, guys, coming in at number 9, we have the Morellatops. Now, this guy is going to be one of your first tames when you start off on Scorched Earth. Main reason being because he's a herbivore and he does gather all the berries you could possibly need. As well as that, he is a... Whoa! I don't know where that Capro went, but it went flying. He's also a really good combat dino. Now, he's obviously not the best, but he does have his niche roles where he's able to deal quite a lot of damage. And, you know, he does do a slight knockback to creatures as well. Just try to avoid fighting these guys in packs, otherwise you will find they won't actually run away from you. They will get aggressive and attack you back. But these guys are great for harvesting berries, and they also provide a constant water supply to you while being in the desert. So you can see here, the water is currently at 0 out of 750. But if you get him near a water source, you can see there that he will drink the water and store it in his hump. You can also use... Um, water containers as well so if you've got like a bunch of water jars or you've got some water skins you can put them in his inventory and store the water for later so that it doesn't expire like it would on scorched earth because in canteens and water jars the water will actually evaporate and that'll pretty much leave you with no water so these guys are great for that they're great start amounts they, they're just they're not obviously this fast our morelotops here has been buffed up extremely fast but um, they definitely get the job done when it comes to gathering berries, as well as dealing with smaller based carnivores and anything that kind of wants to kill you. So yeah, guys, let's move on to number eight. Next up, guys, at number eight, we have the Sabertooth. Now, the Sabertooth should be pretty much your next sort of tame you go for after the Morellatops. You've got in your berry gatherer, you kind of want a carnivore now to be able to deal with any of the hostilities that you find across Scorched Earth, and the Sabertooth can do that for you. Now, his saddle requirement isn't that high. Um, we could have put the Die Wolf on the list, but because the Die Wolf doesn't actually have a saddle, I decided to place the Sabertooth on the list instead. As well as that, the Die Wolf is slightly harder to uh, tame, since you can generally find them in very large packs. Whereas the Sabertooth are more solitary, or you'll find them in packs of like two or three at the most. 
Other than that, these guys are great. They deal a lot of damage. They're great for harvesting Kaiden as well. So if you ever need Kaiden or Keratin, you can harvest the uh, Scorch Jug Bugs or like the Scorpions found around the map and actually kill them for quite a bit of Kaiden. Like you get a decent amount of Kaiden from using these guys. So I definitely recommend taming up a Sabertooth once you've got your berry gathering sorted, these guys can travel pretty fast. Once again, they're not this fast. We have buffed our movement speed up, but they can jump. They can do pretty much everything you need them to do to deal with carnivores and just taking on really anything at all. So guys, let's move on to number seven. Now guys, coming in at number seven, we have the Argentivus. This guy is pivotal for literally any map on Ark. He's a great flyer. He's a great mount. He's a great tame. You name it, this guy can do pretty much everything. He's a great resource gatherer in a way because he's able to reduce the weight of certain resources in his inventory by 50%, 75%. You name it, this guy can do it. He can pick up dinos for you to tame, for example, the Dodicarus, the Anki, the Sabertooth, Thylacolios, most small to medium sized dinos, Caprosuchuses, Baryonyxes. This guy can do it all. He's got a huge stamina pool. He's also got a huge weight pool, which makes him pretty much an, a companion for when you want to go out and just gather as many materials as you possibly can. Because this guy will be able to do it for you once you fill his inventory up. And you can also use his saddle as a portable smithy. His saddle level is level 62, so it's not too high to get. You can easily accomplish that within a couple of hours on any arc. And he's just a really great mount to have. You can breed these guys and get their weights ridiculously high. You can see here we've already got him at level uh, 733 weight, which is incredible. And he's just an all-around great mount to have. You can use him in combat. You can use him for literally anything. You can sacrifice him to Cthulhu for all I care. He is amazing for everything. And you guys know what the RG can do. So let's move on to number six on the list. Now, guys, coming in at number six, we have the Thylacolio. This guy is essentially an upgraded Sabertooth. He is amazing in combat. He's got a huge health pool. He's got a huge stamina pool. He can climb up freaking mountains. Now, on Scorched Earth, that can come in handy. However, you can find yourself on uh, mountains like this, where he's just kind of stuck, and he's kind of, kind of got to, kind of can't go anywhere. So he can climb up pretty much anything 90 degrees vertically. Granted, it can be a little bit wonky sometimes, as in the, the surface that you want him to climb. He still will be able to climb it. He does not move this fast, guys. I can't, st I can't stress this enough. Uh, the dinos don't move this fast. We have buffed their movement speed by quite a bit. But you can see he, he does a pretty good job of scaling these cliff platforms. However, if you do have an RG, you definitely want to use that instead to get around. As the Thylacolio, he can climb up, up him pretty well. But I mean, he can still bug out and not make it all the way. But if you did tame up an RG before the Thylacolio, well, guess what? RGs can actually pick up Thylacolios. So don't be afraid to use them to go out and tame these guys. These guys are great. They deal increased damage in comparison to the Sabertooth. Their health pool is significantly larger. Their weight is significantly larger, as well as their melee damage. These guys are great, and I would heavily recommend upgrading to one of these guys when you have the means to tame them. They're not... Now guys, coming in at number five, we have the Rex. Now the Rex is the largest carnivore on Scorched Earth, aside from the Wyverns, but this guy is gonna be very useful when it comes to fighting the Manticore boss, which you're gonna need all the help you can get, and the Rexes definitely provide that. They're one of the tankiest, one of the highest damaging dealing dinosaurs in all of Ark. In all of Scorched Earth, they are definitely one of the hardest hitting dinos. They can get stuck on cactus trees though, be careful of that. But, you know, these guys, aside from those two abilities, that's pretty much all you'll be using them for. For all the boss fights, for going out, meat running, you know, they might not be the best for meat running. You probably get away with using a wyvern, or, yeah, probably your wyvern might be a better bet if you've got one available to you. But if not, these guys are really easy to tame. They're really easy to trap, to knock out, and just feed with mud and, and tame them up. You can get saddles for them at level 74, and they're just an all-round great mount to run around the Archon. Uh, we have tried to make this list uh, PvP focused as well as PvE focused. So you can definitely use Rexes for PvP as well. Like I said, if you've tamed them, trained them up for like boss fights, they'll have the health and the melee damage to deal with pretty much anything your opponent or the person you're raiding throws at you. These guys are great for all of that and uh, they're really one of the niche dinos on Ark. So guys, let's move on to number four. Now guys, coming in at number four, we have the Mantis. 
The Mantis is once again one of the exclusive dinos to Scorched Earth. And uh, I really love these guys. They're so, they're so fun to use and run around on. Now, you can see there that he's got two clubs in his hand. You can essentially swap these out with whatever tools you want. You can see there he's got pickaxes now, so you can use him to mine. You can swap over to hatchets and use him to cut trees. You can switch over to swords and to deal more DPS. You name it, the Mantis can bloody do it. Look at that, 230. Now, obviously, if you equip a better sword, you'll actually deal more damage. As well as that, if you increase his melee damage, you will also do more damage, which is really awesome. This guy is one of the strongest hitting dinos, in my opinion, if you can give him the right tools and whatnot. For example, we'll go GFI and we'll give ourselves a new sword, and you guys will see just how damn powerful this guy is. That is the blueprint for it. Let's try that again. There we go. Two Mastercraft swords. Let's take a look. We got one for 215. Let's chuck that on. So we're hitting for 237 before, I believe. Let's take it out on these raptors. Look at that. 302. Okay. And now we're getting gangbanged by a bunch of raptors. There we go. Mantis in to save the day once again. And of course. So you can see there that the Mantis definitely benefits of having stronger swords, stronger tools, stronger weaponry. As well as that, you can also use him to knock out things, which... I wouldn't recommend, but if it's a low level and you're like, well, what else have I got to do for today? Let's go out and knock out something. So you can see, for example, over here, we've got a Morellatops level 12. We swing our bats at him, and just like that, we knock the Morellatops out. Three hits. You can see the durability on the club as well has gone down slightly, but not crazy. So now guys, coming in at number three, we have the Rock Golem. All the Rock Elemental, whatever you want to call him. This guy is great for PvP. He's great for PvE as well. Don't get me wrong, you can definitely use this guy in PvE situations, but this guy really shines during PvP. He is one of the best heavy turret soakers as well as the standard auto turret soakers. All you essentially need to do, walk forward with your head up and your rock golem will protect you and soak the turrets. Now, these guys have a huge health pool once you level them up quite a bit. And they also take reduced damage from literally everything. Except for like tech stuff. Tech stuff is where they do take quite a bit of damage. But these guys are great for turret soaking. And like I said, this list was designed for PvE and PvP as well. And the Rock Golem has uses in both, like the turret soaking. Now, in PvE, you can essentially use this guy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything you face on Scorched Earth. As well as that, you can use him to harvest stone galore as well as sand. You can then also use him as a portable, not a portable turret, but sort of like a base defense turret. So if you go behavior, you can actually sit him onto turret mode and change him over to aggressive and you'll see that he'll start throwing boulders or whatever the hell he sees. That poor Parasaur is not gonna know what hit him. You're gonna, you're gonna throw another boulder that's gonna hit this time, mate? Alrighty guys, now coming in at number two, we have the Wyverns. Now, we're including all three Wyverns, the Lightning, the Poison, and the Fire Wyvern. All of these guys are amazing. Everyone has their own favorites. Me personally, I really like the Lightning Wyvern, but the Fire Wyvern is just as good, and the Poison Wyvern also has its uses, especially really useful for taking out Plant uh, X, Plant Species X. Tyrus, that's really good for using them on uh, that. But these guys are great. They deal a lot of damage. They're great for just dealing damage, meat harvesting. You can fly around and use these guys to, to do meat runs. They're a lot faster than Rexes, and they are probably one of the most alpha carnivores you can find on Scorched Earth. As well as that, you can also use these guys to harvest thatch. Now, don't get me wrong, there are other thatch harvesters, but these guys still are able to gather a pretty decent amount of thatch. You can see there, from one tree, we were able to gather 282 thatch, which... You know, it's, it's, it's a decent amount. Obviously, you can use a pickaxe or like a Megalosaurus Ceros, uh, as well. You can use pretty much anything to gather thatch nowadays. But these guys do it relatively well, and they can fly. They've got pretty big health pools. They are able to pick up most large dinos as well. I think the maximum size they can pick up are Stegos, I believe. So that in Alrighty, guys. Now, coming in at number one, you guys probably saw this a mile away. We have the Phoenix. Now, the Phoenix only spawns on Scorched Earth. Now, all these other dinos do spawn on Scorched Earth, but they also spawn on other maps. The Phoenix is the only creature that spawns exclusively to the Scorched Earth map, which is absolutely awesome. This guy is very rare. He can only be found and tamed during a superheat event, so you've always got to watch out for that. 
And his move skills are pretty damn cool. Essentially, if you hold down space R, he takes on like a, I don't know, a bomber sort of stance and he just flies and covers everything. He just carpet bombs the area in flames. If you fly past any teams, they will be set on fire. You can steer him and control him. You can see here we are doing a pretty good job of it. However, if you do get hit by trees or anything like that, you will stop. You can see this poor rock elemental wants to go us. He also does fire damage, which does a percentage of health damage, like the fire wyvern, to whatever it is that he is facing. You can see here this rock elemental is taking 100 damage over time, constantly. And, you know, I mean, it's nothing amazing, but it is really good for taking on those high health targets. As well as that, you can also use this guy to harvest metal. Now, it's really not that great to harvest metal because he does not reduce the weight of metal in his inventory. You can see there, it weighs 10 in there, and it weighs 10 in our inventory. So he does get very easily overburdened, but he can also cook the metal in his inventory. You can see there, it's slowly getting cooked up. As well as that, he can also cook raw meat and every other kind of meat in his inventory as well. Well, what are we, the bloody terror birds is so loud. So if you've got any prime meat or any mutton or any standard raw meat, you can also cook that in his inventory and he will produce cooked meat for you. As well as that, I do believe he produces sulfur passively over time as well as um, vomiting up and pooping silica pearls. So if you're really short on silica pearls and you really just need to tame up a phoenix in order to, to uh, get some, you definitely want to get one of these guys because they poop silica pearls. Now, aside from that, guys, that's pretty much all his abilities. Um, this dive bomb attack does deal damage to wild dinos if you coax past them and, and like, rub seedily up against them. They will take four, fire damage from the Phoenix. But other than that, guys, he's just a really cool team to have, and I think he does. I definitely think he deserves the number one spot. The only thing that really bugs me about the Phoenix is the metal weight reduction and the fact that he can't actually land. He is always flying. You can't actually land phoenixes. But uh, aside from that, he's a really awesome tame, and he is exclusive to Scorched Earth. And you can see here, he did just poop out 15 silica pearls for us. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. So, yeah, guys, that is going to wrap up the video for today. Let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments, guys. We'll be doing one of these for uh, each of the other maps as well. So if you've got any recommendations or anything like that, let me know down in the comments. But other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe down below for more as well. But other than that, guys, I will catch you in the next one. And I got this soda.